Ah, hey, welcome back, everybody. We're... Sorry. We're playing Bastion. Yep. I need to figure out what happens if I quit the outhouse a bunch of times. Something has to happen. They wouldn't let you click it otherwise. Yeah. Alright, well, we're speedrunning it, apparently. I don't remember that outhouse. I don't either. The Ura swooped down from the east. At least now. I don't know if this way. is possible. Is it? Okay, maybe it's not. It not be. No, it's not. Okay, well, maybe not the last episode then. Okay, well, we'll we're gonna keep, we're gonna do this. We can okay. do this. We're going to get so it. So close. Done. Boom. Yes. I do like this, these little bits, right? Because they're sort of, to the era of the Bastion, symbolizes Salandia, which they now, which they now know brought the calamity upon them, which is like, a nice, like, sort of, coded, like, explicit statement. Hey, here's what happened in case you missed it, because we were going... We were being well, kind of cryptic shot. about it, right? Yeah, I like that they've not just been throwing randomized story bits up throughout the whole thing. They're kind of gated to where, like, to the point where you won't see a specific loading tips until their story relevance, like, like until the information is actually relevant to you. Yeah. I think that's just. Oh, well. Oh, that just happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's just good storytelling in general, like. You talked a little bit about it on the last episode, but just being able to... Oh, alright, I guess I'm here now. This level feels way really way different, like, art and look-wise. Yeah. You never it is. I guess they just had to kind of budget where they were gonna... Yeah, I mean, they have the benefit of... Well, I mean, they, they have the challenge of, like, I guess, narrative-wise, we're going to the Ura country now, right? So right. So it, it, it has to look different. Sure. Um, that makes sense. No! We saw the healing thing there I didn't get. Damn you! Damn you, Bastion! You can do this. Can I? Use your Dan power. I... Wait. You should we... have a Dan power. Wait, do we each Dan have a separate Look Dan power? Look under your seat. We've probably got a Dan power. Okay, but we, do we all have the same Dan power? I would like to think we all have our own special unique Dan power. Okay, but, but we all use I don't like, make the, the rules. like the same Dan meter or something? Yeah. It's like comes from the, the same shared place. resource. Yeah. Wait, is it shared? Hmm. No. Nah, I hope not, because Dan Jones. Dan Jones is like doing something important it's in Florida. Like, bad design. Yeah, we might. Well, I mean, we, I might just not be able to do anything that day. <laughs> Dan Jones just uses up all the. This all is the stupid. Dan Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most thrilling conversation we've had all night. Uh. Most uh, of our efforts no, you're so much better at improv than me that whenever we're talking, I kind of want to start <laughs> like just go learning. All, like I want to start bouncing stuff off of you just to learn. Just do it. I'll start <laughs> talking about anything. <laughs> give me, give me a, give me a prompt. Okay. You are a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you, you apparently have a blank canvas problem with your mouth. It's a hundred percent true. Oh my god, that's it's pretty hard. Improv is improv is no jokes. It is not. It is an incredibly difficult skill. It's a lot of fun though. It is. You should go do some. Damn it! I've had some like improv classes for like different animation teams I've been on, and it's always been really fun and. Uh, Really valuable too. Very good animation team team building experience. Came from an era, a brilliant young scientist named oh, all right. That was good. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> like my sweet moves? Oh, well, I'm dead. Um, <laughs> for the the all right, kid. In the city's drawer. Kid. 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 Oh. He's fine. He's fine. Hey. hey. He's all right, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I see you there. <laughs> nice try. Yeah. With his help, the Mancers devised a way to seal the Ura tunnel shut in a flash. Just like that, well, this is... every last Ura living in the Tassel terminal hey! will be gone. Oh! Yeah. I do think that, like, Th this level especially, um, when we started, we talked about this uh, like a while ago. This discovery um, was but the, used, <laughs> a but this is this is very much, this this has very little to do with what's going on, in, like the, the, from the kids' perspective. This is very much like the game is at this point, and I think intentionally <laughs> so, becoming further disconnected from what the the kids 
in immediate actions are. Sure. Because this is a lot more like, okay, this entire level so far has been a history lesson. Like, hey, right. this is what happened to the error, and this is why they're mad at us. Um, so... But Van didn't like nope. being manipulated. He right. had plans of his own. That's a cool choice. Like, it, yeah, like I, mean, I think it works. Well, yeah, it's it's one of these things where the way that they, I guess, the way they set it up is that the payoff for what they've been creating so far is the the, the resolution of the story, right? Sure. So in the sort of like we're we're sort of in the lull before the final um, the final crescendo moment, right? Right. Uh, so. What they're doing is, I think they're they're purposely taking a break, narratively and action-wise. Although the action in this level is pretty intense, uh, comparatively, um, to say, hey, let's take a look at what you know, like let's do something that is a little bit lower key, so that when we go into the final one and we're actually like, dealing with all of the the heavy oh, stuff at the end, the we. Uh, Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but for those people who have been way into the narrative so far, it's giving you a lot of information to also contextualize the final, uh, right? It's, final it, stuff. That's what it's about. I think is that we're, it's context. Damn it! But it is still an action. Like. Bad that you're right. Oh. Exactly been willing to oh. Okay. You're, you're okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> just kills like, me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> straight up, just dead. It's not interrupting the action gameplay. Yeah, it's it's still it still holds true to that. It's like they want to make sure that if you're not acting, it's it's for as short a time as possible. Right. But they are accomplishing a whole lot here, just narrative wise. But it's it's I think purposely low key to help set up the because because we're we're right at the end. Like right. The next level I think is the last one. Um. It's actually been a really good playthrough of just like mapping interest curves. Yeah. Because all like all these levels have their own interest curve, which I which I guess we can point out for some of the, the earlier levels, it's a lot easier. But like this game's interest curve is pretty uh there's some pretty figure needed rescue normal. Like pretty typical. I mean you said this toward the beginning as well, but the interest curve does like a plot like its application is at all scales. Like, I think even at one point, in one of the episodes where we talked about uh, pacing, I think, uh, we even kind of illustrated that even in just firing a gun in a shooter, mm -hmm. there is the good there, ones there's a degree of that. Curve, yeah. yeah. Like, the initial kind of lining up of the shot, the kind of little pause right before you pull the trigger, just like start pulling the trigger, fire, big kablam, and then the resolution afterward. Like, it's just a tiny scale version of how that interest curve appeal works. It's really, really good. Okay, so do we want to like change up what we've been using? Or <coughs> might as well just keep going with what we got. Did I do anything cool? No. Nope. Can I buy it? No. Alright, whatever. <laughs> Speed run. There's, there's something Speed we run. do before going after that last shot. Is he like, a detective? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not 100% sure that the mic is picking up everything you're saying, but I like that there's just, like, thought mumble. Yeah. It's just, like, processing thought about the... No, we don't... Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's, I actually like it. It's a feature. Yeah, it's a feature. Because now it, now we can, like, turn up the volume on the parts where I sound smart, and then whenever I sound like a complete idiot, I can just, like, <laughs> mumble it down a little bit. Well, now it's personal, ain't it? It's personal for him. And it's personal for me. He finds his moment to strike. Yeah, I think... What if it, like... They never the saw him picking coming. up all of these. He gets his hands on the care package I sent him. Whoa. Whoa. That cat does not like this. Both to the stuff. thing on screen and to the cat. Yeah. Complaining. It's a little something I've been fixing up in my spare time. It's crazy they're introducing new weapons even toward the end here. Well, they, yeah, they do right up to the end. Like we're like this isn't even the last weapon. Um, Kid has to put a damper on their plans. But yeah, they have. Ow! Oh, that actually hurts you. Yeah. Okay. It is no jokes. <laughs> this will wreck you. <laughs> ah, I'm coughing so much. Uh... Sorry, guys. Stop it. Got him. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely when, when, if if you like. Uh, They've got these. Like if you go check out the the difference, and you mentioned earlier in the playthrough, but the difference in kind episodes. Yes. Uh, at, now now showing in this beautiful. Uh, Link. I just gestured with my hand as if, as if anybody can see what I'm doing. <laughs> where the kid just fell off, that's where the Link is. Yeah, right there. Um, but they had a... Like, this is essentially what games do to keep themselves fresh, is that they give you different stuff to do, like, at any given time. So even if you think of it on the level of an FPS, they're constantly giving you different types of levels, either sniper levels or... Ah! Um... Or just moment to moment, like yeah. we're gonna fight in corridors, and then we're gonna fight over a banister, and then we're gonna fight uh, around a corner, and we're gonna fight, you know, in a very short hallway, and just like mixing up where you're fighting. Even the ever popular like on rails section, just yeah. like it's something different for a little bit, yeah. like not for a long period, not very often, but just a little bit, just to break it up. Yep. So when you have an action game like this, the, the, clearly what they they opted to do was give you different weapons to sort of make things change all the time. And that's why in other action games you might have puzzles worked in as well. Like God of War has a bunch of puzzles as well. Yeah. Because if it was just all hack and slash all the time, it would get it would start feeling older a lot faster. Yeah. Interest curve, right? right? Yep. You, you need you need things that are And yeah, and it also gives the interest curve varying like levels of energy. That are like that there's the high energy combat fighting moments and then the slower like thoughtful all right how do i solve this how do i solve this navigation puzzle so when you're doing like an action game like this where you have all of these different weapons that you programmed in what you do is you try to make each of these weapons feel different and play different where um oh, where anytime you're using a different one you're actually getting a different experience and one of the things that action games tend to do that i don't think bastion actually executed on all that well is that they can for they can reuse old content by making you switch between your weapons, but because of the way the thing is the, the mechanics are, you don't actually end up spending a whole lot of time with multiple weapons. You tend to pick your favorites and then just keep them. Sure. Like, I've spent most of my time in this one with the, the machete and the machete uh, and the pistols. Yeah, which I mean, granted, like switch man managing to hold in your head like 12 different weapons that function super differently on the fly and like being and changing them up constantly would be pretty complicated to deal with but, i don't even think they needed to like i don't even know how different they are right the calamity cannon is essentially the same as the galleon mortar except one arcs and the by now every the um terminals must know he's in town. What are you, like like i feel like the different the big differences are you have the machete which is basically <laughs> the same as the the pike which is those, like those are in their own class, and they have the bow, which is basically the same as the the carbine, and they have the calamity cannon, which is basically the same as the other thing. Like I think their their actual difference in weapons isn't super strong. Like they don't accomplish very different things. Not strong enough that you would like even if you did have the option of all the weapons at once, you would probably find your two favorites and cycle between them. Or I mean, like the thing is that you can solve a lot of that with level and encounter design. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was totally plain. Good, good fall. Yeah. Um, where you can just say, okay, given that we have all of, like, ow. Like, given that we have all of these different... Ah, kill it, yeah. <laughs> um, really missing that machete. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Like, I couldn't actually get close there. <coughs> but you can just give, like, oh... I can design an enemy that it's easier to fight with the pistols than it is with the machete, than it is with the calamity cannon, than it is with the like, like I can design monsters and levels where, like, they, and they did it a lot of times when you first introduced the weapons, right? Like, usually you get a level where like, hey, this weapon is pretty good. Now you can see it in its in its intended location. Sure, I, which I guess yeah, the weapon challenges specifically are. Yeah, weapon challenges are, are like distilled versions of that. But I mean, because there's no real good way to switch weapons in the middle of a level, Those you can't really do that because you don't want a player to be like, oh man, I wish I had that other weapon, better restart, right? My memory on it is not super clear, but I feel like Transistor's version of that, of the like weapon stages, is even more useful and effective. Wait, just in highlighting how, because their weapon system is so much more complex. Well, their weapon system is one, more flexible, and two, you can change it on the fly. Yeah. I think that the weapon systems in Transistor is much, much improved. I agree, but it is like it is a lot to... 
the fact that a different a weapon functions differently depending on how it's equipped and what else with yeah, yeah is a lot to it's def it's definitely a lot more complex in, in in getting it getting to that stage but their weapon specific stages do a really great job in drawing your attention to how you can use them differently. Yeah. They do also split it up. Like, if you can think of it in terms of analysis paralysis. Like, there's just a lot of combinations. Sure. But most of those combinations re result in something that's de that's decent, so it's really hard to mess it up. Right. And even then, like, you'll be playing with them long enough to understand what's going on. Yeah. And then the rest of it is just passive bonuses. Like, you'll know what the what each individual skill does, and then you can just figure out, okay, well, what is the passive bonus I get from equipping the other skill? Yes, our people cause and then... You end up having these places where I, th I think my favorite thing in that game is that the fact that when you when you take a hit, that's not the button I meant to press. Um, <laughs> when you take a hit and you go down, they force you to switch your weapons. Yes, that is that is I think one of the favorite my favorite things is like when you screw up and you go down. It's like okay, now you have to try now try something else because we're gonna lock out one of your skills for a couple of encounters. Forces you to improvise. Right, and I think that's where it like you get the trying out of a bunch of different stuff like hey try this new weapon because you know you are locked out of these three that you normally use and so, i have found many combinations that i actually suddenly love and never would have tried otherwise right exactly that's the point and i think it's, it's just a super smart shame the um, opportunity for civilized discourse is over ow so actually, speaking of Transistor, do you've mentioned uh, a time or two that you feel that, like, narrative-wise, that Transistor is the weaker of these two games. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it is weaker in the story it aims to tell, or in the way it aim it tries to tell it? I think it's the way it times it tries to tell it, and I think there are two reasons for that. One, um, it's it's kind of weird talking about Transistor. It's, it's kind of like talking about somebody behind their back because we're not playing Transistor. <laughs> um, but it's okay, I can't hear you. <laughs> Um, I think that it, like, it, it's, like, the story it tells is actually super cool, and I really like it. Yeah. I think that the problem is that in the, the first one, or the, the first problem is that the narrator is with you. It's not all-knowing. Sure. Even though Rux isn't all-knowing, he can sort of give a, a level-headed view of the situation and give you background on, on what's going on. Right. But, he, and he doesn't need to make it sound like a conversation. Because the transistor, who's the narrator in that one, is always talking to you... It's very hard for him to, like, give you a line that both sounds like a conversation and also provides the same level of detail that Bastion did. Sure. Um, exposition is exposition much, is, much more difficult than that. Yeah, it's a lot harder to write those lines and make them feel good when you have to sound so like you're talking to a human uh, being. They have every reason to be angry. Uh, but... Beyond angry. As the hour grows desperate, they are uh, bringing They end up... I think like the oh. like it, it's still a good character. Like I still oh, like yeah. the transistor as a character, but it's still it ends up being a lot less. I, I think that's one of the bigger reasons. The other reason is because um, what was the other reason? Did I say both of my reasons at the same time? Uh, it's possible. One thing that that I felt like I noticed is that, especially now pl playing this again and kind of refreshing on it, is that. The bits of optional side flavor and texture and story that they are delivering here with narration and bits in loading screens and bits in just just stuff that Rux says while you're interacting with various pieces of the world mm -hmm. are more often there because they because the Rux character is a, like a actual character it's right there with you all the time and can't fill that same omniscient narrator role is relegated to text pieces that are fully optional. Yeah. Which is what a lot of other games would do for their, like, additional information you don't need, but fills in a lot of gaps. He sees the and, but a lot of people aren't going to want to make that space, and, I mean, even I, like, didn't want to stop to read and familiarize myself with a lot of that stuff and completely stop the flow of the game. So there are... I feel like there's still a lot about Transistor's story, a lot of subtleties that I don't know that... In this game, I would. Yeah, there, I think that yeah, my my two reasons I think I I put into one, which is because the narrator is with you all the time, and because the narrator is not all the time. Nothing for this gal to sing about now. Zia, you weren't kidnapped. No, ma'am. You just had to see what happened to the era, to your own people. 
Next one is the last level. All right. Okay, we're getting there. Do we want to do another like, yeah, let, final let, episode? Yeah, let's, all right. Next episode. The finale. For, for real this time. For real this time, assuming Dan can not die. <laughs> I haven't died yet. I got one second chance, but that's it. We can do it. We got this. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.